Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Prometheus Lost Wave. My original thought was to say these are three figures that were teased long ago and we are just finally getting with the help of Alien Covenant bringing back a little Ridley Scott Alien Universe hype. But I think I'd be lying because I want to say Vickers is a brand new figure and we were supposed to get an infected Holloway instead. But anyway, we have from left to right Elizabeth Shaw, Sean Fifield, and Meredith Vickers. I am trying something out a little different here reviewing the entire wave in one shot. This is mostly because the female body is exactly the same on both of those two figures. And Fifield shares the exact same body with David, who we got in the original run of Prometheus figures. So in completely changing up the fashion, I'm going to go and look at the two body types first, and then we'll break it down into the things that are unique, basically the accessories and the head sculpts here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to start off looking at the body for the Fifield figure, just because we've already gotten this before. We have some really well-sculpted space armor here. I guess you'd call it space suit. We have the kind of harder chest plate going around with the backpack here with all kinds of vents and little science-y bits, because sci-fi, I guess. There's some great dry brushing here, too, to kind of bring out some silver in the backpack. I like that we have some markings here. We have a little red and gold piece here on the side of the back. And then we have the Wayland Corp operation logo there on the back of his neck some little red kind of latch looking details here right where the helmet would plug in we have what i think would be the name plate here at the front but it's just white i did check david's exactly the same the one david this little detail here is painted silver so it's a bit of a difference we have the piece here on the shoulder where the camera would plug in i do not believe fifield comes with a camera if he does i completely lost it which doesn't really matter for this character so i can kind of believe he wouldn't have it also here on the chest i think that's the prometheus logo i can't read the text on it but the text is there another red logo there at the bottom it's kind of spartan helmet logo here on the side and another little white marker there on the other side underneath that we do have the blue suit that has all the kind of lines going through it the arms continue on that same look with the armor bits all over it we have the gauntlet there around the wrist which kind of has a predator-esque looking computer there i also do like the detail here on the elbow pad it looks like it actually has a mechanical joint in there which is cool and the glove kind of has these almost skeletal looking fingers with the little joints in between them not functional joints but they look really nice and we have the padding on the inside of the hand we kind of have a trigger finger here on his right and then a gripping hand over there on his left which is weird because none of the male figures have any kind of gun or anything so it's weird that he has a trigger finger going on the waist we have his belts which has this kind of nice multi-segmented batman utility belt look we have a red marking there in the front nice silver buckle there on the side we have i think it looks like a flashlight or some kind of tube there on his hip we get some more power pouches coming out of his butt including that one that looks very uncomfortable to sit with another little latch and like a peg coming off the side here it looks like it would hold something else i had to double check david again to make sure that it didn't actually have an accessory that i lost or something go around the back of the legs we have more armor going around the pants and then the bigger armor pieces here up front very very dirty paint job over all of this making him look like he spent the night in an alien temple you have the knees similar details to the elbows we have the kind of mechanical joint in there and that strap kind of comes around the back though it does fade into the blue a lot there in the back didn't really finish painting it but i'm guessing that's an area where there would be a lot of paint rub anyway and we have the kind of shin ankle guards here see it goes like a mesh there at the ankle itself and then there's some mesh and hard metal looking bits there in the boot and the boot also does have some nice kind of dirt patterns on it not a lot it's kind of subtle but it is there and then we of course do have peg holes there at the bottom of his feet and while we're looking at the body i'm just going to jump into articulation so he does have a ball joint there at the neck so you can look up down side to side as well as pivot it is a little hindered because of the way his head is shaped but you get a decent range there pin socket joint at the shoulder you can go forward back as well as out to the side the shoulder armor doesn't hinder it at all you can bend at the elbow but unfortunately the elbow joint is screwed up you can only rotate the forearm at the bottom you can't actually rotate the arm side to side which is really dumb you can also rotate at this forearm gauntlet and then we have a ball joint there at the hand we have a mid torso joint you can go forward back rotate side to side and pivot we also have a waist joint that does pretty much the same thing just a little more limited the legs will move forward a little bit back hindered by all that crap he has on his butt and there is no rubber butt on this figure like a lot of the NECA figures have now you also move the leg out to the side rotate at the upper leg 
a really nice double jointed knee and a great ball joint there at the foot. My only gripe are these hip joints are super, super loose. Onto the female body here. We're gonna look at it with the helmet since the helmet is the same for both these figures. We're gonna ignore the head sculpt for the time being. The helmet is a little different than the one we'd originally gotten with the David figure, which is the only figure we've gotten previously that has one. If you bring that in for comparison, you can see there's that gold kind of loop at the top where this one is black. But I guess the rest of the details are close to the same. The bit of gold that is here on Vickers' helmet is different than the gold on David's, but I guess mostly the same kind of piece. Similar to Fifield, we have the high collar here for the spacesuit. We have the Whalen Utani logo there at the back. The same kind of markings around the collar that we had on the male body. The chest is definitely different. We have this kind of squared off piece here. We have the Prometheus logo being a bit smaller. The nameplate, same blank one. We do get the silver detailing here on the chest. I think this is actually the Prometheus logo. Now that I think about it, this little white one here. That was actually red on the male costume, but it's white on this one. The shoulder armor is actually rubberized here, so it kind of hangs over the shoulder joints. We have the same little plug here at the shoulder for the camera. And then we actually have the plug here at the helmet. And then the camera itself is a little separate bit. So that could plug into the shoulder as well. This one does not come with a cord. The one with David had a cord that was permanently affixed to the backpack. This one doesn't have that. I'm not super upset about it, but I was kind of surprised that they didn't add it. The backpack itself has the same detail we had on the other body. Nice same dry brushing effect, giving it a silver look. Doesn't have the little bit here at the bottom. There's kind of a hook here on the bottom of the male body. This one's a little more simplified, I guess, but still looks really nice. The one thing I really like about the female body here is that it's super, super bright. Right. Fifield's uniform is really dirty looking, but even compared to the David, it's a much more bright metallic blue, and this orange just really pops on the figure. All the piping on there looks really neat. We kind of have these straps here on the side. They look like they actually hold part of the backpack on. These are a little muddy in terms of sculpt. It's like the paint is too thick for the detail that's underneath it. So that's a bit of a bummer, but nothing horrible. The arms continue that look. None of the armor in the upper arm that the men had, and the elbow joint's a lot more simplified. But we have a similar gauntlet here, though does break into blue before going to the gloves. And the gloves have that very similar look to the men's, those jointed fingers, the kind of meshy padded looking section there in the inside. Both women have the same hands. We have a gripping hand here on the right and a trigger finger there on the left. You also see the kind of predator gauntlet detail in there, even though it's not predator. On the upper left arm, we also have another logo for the ship. The belt is very much the same as well. We have the little red clip there in the middle, the little buckles there on the side. We don't have the tube off the side here. We do have an extra pouch and none of that crap on the butt as well. They got rid of all that detail. Seems like it would be helpful. And another pouch here on the opposite side. The knees, no real armor here like the men have, just kind of black parts of the costume, unless this is supposed to be really lazy armor. And we have the same kind of boots that we had on the male figure, just downsized for the female body. And also peg holes at the bottom of the feet. For articulation, we have a ball joint at the neck, so you can look up, down, side to side, as well as pivot. The arms will go forward, back, not hindered by the shoulder joint because it is rubberized. You also go out to the side, but it's only about a 45 degree movement. You can bend at the elbow, once again, only about 45 degrees, but you do get a proper rotation on it instead of that stupid arm swivel bit. No gauntlet rotation here because there's not much room, but we do get a ball joint there at the wrist. So you could swivel as well as move a little bit up and down. Mid torso ball joint here, not a ton of range forward and back. You can move side to side a little bit. Once again, hinder just by the shape of the torso and then you can pivot a little bit. You guys should get more motion out of the waist on this figure, a lot more freer movement on that ball joint. It's kind of the opposite between the men and women here. The women also do get the rubber butt. So you actually have a little more freedom with the legs. You can go forward, you can go much further back than the men and you can go out to the side. You can rotate the leg at the hip. You bend at the knee, once again, about only 45 degrees, and then you can rotate there, and then you have a ball joint there at the foot. All right, now that we've seen what's the same between these figures, we could take a look at what's different. Five Field only really comes with one accessory, which is this flashlight thing. We got a similar one with David, so it's really just the exact same crap we had with David with this figure. It looks decent as the white light patches on here, and it's mostly just a dark gray beyond that. I don't really see a need to give this to the character because I don't think he was carrying anything once he turned into a zombie, mutant, whatever, space creature. Fifield's head sculpt is definitely unique. You can see his cranium is expanding and becoming all misshapen due to the alien goo. And this causes some interesting issues with the figure itself that we'll get into. As far as the paint goes, it's okay. I think if I just looked at it on its own, I'd say it was fine. But looking at the promo picture on the package, I noticed that this blood is a lot more vibrant there on that packaging. This is really dull here. And the 
hair is painted pretty sloppily. There's kind of some skin gaps. I had that problem with the suit as well. So it's just kind of like lazy painting on this figure. His mohawk here is kind of rubberized, which is definitely needed for getting his helmet on. And then the detail I never noticed in the movie, there's actually a gap in the back of his mohawk, which is strange. But he has this very lumpy texture all over his head. His head's so enlarged that it makes Jason Voorhees look normal. We have his hard sculpted beard here at the bottom, which also kind of hinders articulation, as I mentioned before. The eyes are actually pretty well done. They're very clean looking and very just gross looking. There's a black wash over the whole head, which zoomed in this close looks a little heavy handed, but it's actually not too bad from a distance. See, there's also some brown dry brushing there in the beard. And I do love the screwed up teeth they gave him. For being such a tiny detail, they actually did a really good job of capturing how screwed up they are. Fifield also comes with his helmet. And you can see this is a very different helmet than the one we had with David. You can bring that one in for comparison again. And well, just the color alone is enough to tell you this is something different. And then we're also missing this whole kind of cross section here because the faceplate has been torn apart. NECA did a decent job of doing the kind of shattered glass look. I like that there's kind of black goo all through the inside of the helmet, more obscuring the figure inside. We do still have the port up here for the camera, but like I said, I don't believe this figure comes with a camera. I couldn't find one in my package anyway. The problem, however, becomes when you try to put the helmet on his head because his head's so gigantic, doesn't really want to go on. So in my attempts to fix this, I actually kind of screwed the figure up a little bit and I popped his head off, not at the neck joint, but at this joint that I assume is supposed to be glued down inside the body. But despite it being loose now, this does make life easier. So now you can basically kind of put the head in through the front and then peg it into the body and then put the rest of the helmet down around it. It's a really awkward way to do things. And then the head is kind of perpetually like a bobble head in there, but that's the only way I could find to really effectively get the helmet on without feeling like I'm just gonna tear the paint up on this head sculpt. It's a cool idea that NECA gave us the ability to switch between the head being in the helmet and out of the helmet, but it's just nerve wracking to do the swap. So I think I'm gonna leave him with the shattered helmet. I think that looks coolest, gives a much more sinister vibe. So I'm gonna leave it at that and not screw with it too much more and risk breaking or damaging anything. Shaw comes with some cool, unique accessories. She has her ax, which I also thought was very impractical looking, but it's one she uses at the end of the movie. A very nice silver ax head here. You can see the sharpened edge there looking very nice. I really like how this came out. We have the wood handle, or I assume it's probably a fake wood because it is the future. So it's probably a composite or something. And then we go down into this black handle here, which almost has like a trigger on it, which is kind of weird. And then this bit at the end, which I guess is maybe like a glass shattering tool or something like that. But it's a cool looking ax. I just think the shape of it was always very strange, but you can hold it very easily in either one or two hands, which is nice since we get so many figures that can't do that. Shaw also comes with a long awaited accessory of Michael Fassbender's head. This makes me really happy. This is one of the things I was most disappointed that we weren't going to get when the line got canceled. So we get David all over again with his hair brushed off to the side, looking really good. I'm pretty sure it's the same sculpt we got with the original figure, but it actually looks much better painted now that they compare the two side by side. And we actually do get a ball joint here at his neck so you can get all that range of motion out of it and have him like he's still functioning without the rest of his body. The part that disappoints me is when we get down to the shoulders and it breaks away to become his android guts. The color is very so silvery gray and I need to rewatch Prometheus but I know with Alien it's more of a white so I don't I'm trying to remember if it's less milky looking in Prometheus but the color just seems off to me here I do have a really nice spine coming down the back with some wires and goo hanging down I have to say I am very impressed with the head sculpt here on Shaw I think it looks a lot like the actress and this is the first figure I saw on the pegs when I was looking at the store. And I think the paint came out pretty good. Her eyes are maybe a little lopsided when you look at it this close, but looking at it with the naked eye, they look pretty darn good. All the details on the face are in the right places. There's some nice highlights there on her cheeks to make her look a little more alive. The hair has some nice dry brushing. It is also kind of a rubberized hair, so you don't lose much articulation because of it. It's a simple head sculpt, but I think for what we're used to getting from NECA, this came out really, really nice. I'm going to make some statement like this is probably one of the most accurate head sculpts and I'm sure people are going to love to correct me on that so I'm going to refrain from going maybe that far but I really like it. I mentioned it with the Vickers piece but she also does come with the same dome and same camera and it is really easy to get the dome over her head on this figure. I'm fumbling because I'm on camera but it's not that bad. 
My only gripe with this, and it's same with Vickers, is that there is some kind of warping in the plastic here at the bottom of the dome. And I notice it is the same on David's. There's a little distortion at the bottom, but because the way these fit over the female heads, David's head took up more of the helmet. So his face was more centered here in this viewing section. Here, the women's head kind of gets towards that bottom a little too closely. And it's really easy to see it where you get like weird distortions across the face because of the way the plastic is shaped. So that is a bit of a bummer. They just don't look quite as good with the helmets on as it does off. And last but not least, we'll take a look at Vickers. This was the figure that's giving me the most problems in this wave. First up, we have her flamethrower accessory, her only real accessory besides her helmet and camera. And this is really nicely detailed. I love the black plastic looking very metallic. You have all these silver bits. You see the bottle in there and all the tubes. When I first got this, the igniter, I assume, here at the top and then the nozzle were actually bent and fused together. So I had to take a knife and cut them apart and bend it back into the correct location location. Also, be very careful because removing it from the package, it comes basically like this with this handle up. And I'm like, oh, handle, easy place to pull it up out of the package. That was a mistake. It came right off. So I actually had to glue it back on and it's still pretty fresh. So I'm a little afraid to put it back in her hand. So I'll put it back in at the very end of the review, I guess. We have this nice orange trigger here at the back. And it's a cool looking accessory. It's just one of those pieces that's very, very fragile. So you need to be very careful with it. It doesn't seem to be made out of the same rubbery plastic we've gotten a lot of accessories made from. It's actually very rigid plastic, except for maybe it's like hose here. But this tube here in the back is even rigid. So I would just be very careful when posing your figure with this because there is a high probability you could snap something on here without doing much. I have the helmet on Vickers, but it's basically the same deal as Shaw. It comes off very easily, goes back on very easily. However, the other problem with this figure was finding one with eye paint that didn't make me just completely pissed off. The eyes were all over the place on the figures I looked at. I think I looked at six different figures on the shelf and the one that was deepest in the pegs was the one that looked okay, this one here. But when you get one that looks right, I think it looks pretty good. The eyes are a little almost milky looking and I think and it kind of gives her this very dead look. That's kind of the look that the actress had in the film to a weird extent. I know Idris Elba asks her at one point if she's a robot. Her hair is pretty nicely done. It is also rubberized. They did some dry brushing on here. I think it might be a little goofy looking. The lighter blonde color in there just kind of looks a little overdone and then it gets very dark there at the top. But the rest of the detail on the face is decent. And then it's very hard to see, but she actually does have a little ponytail there in the back and even the tie around it. So details you won't really even see without messing with the head a considerable amount, but they are there. And for a comparison, here is Shaw, David, and Fifield next to each other. Really, I just wanted to put a comparison between the female and male bodies for this line, and then a comparison between the clean David suit and the totally gross and ugly looking Fifield suit. Same sculpt between the two men, just a very, very different paint job to show the difference between the environments they're in. And for basically a full line size comparison, with the exception of a couple small items, going from left to right, we have Shaw, Fifield, the deacon, the engineer, the engineer in its suit, and the hentai tentacle monster, actually the trilobite, but I love calling it that because apparently it pisses a lot of people off. And I believe I had mentioned back when I was originally reviewing the early Prometheus releases that I was impressed with how different the sizes of all the different characters were in this line. I can't really show the hammer peed off, but that I guess is an even smaller piece. But we did get a really cool size variance between all the different creatures and characters in this line. I think that was really impressive. It has translated over pretty damn well for the NECA Alien line. So it's cool to see the final evolution of this series. And it's nice to know that the DNA went somewhere useful. So I think we could pretty definitively say this is it for the Prometheus line. NECA has pretty much given us that answer plain and simple. There is basically zero chance of us getting that infected Holloway down the line. It does not seem like it's going to be in the cards. But I have to say, looking back, what we got was really cool. I love the Prometheus line. I don't know why exactly I have such fond feelings for this set of figures, but it really just makes me happy. And it was really nice to be able to revisit it with these three new pieces. I'm going to give all three figures a recommend. I would say Shaw is the absolute standout, shining, best figure of this way. If you're picking up one, Shaw is the one. I know I was really lucky in finding one quickly that had great paint apps. 
I don't know if that's really across the line. To be quite honest, I didn't look any further than my first figure, just seeing that it was pretty damn good. But given my experience with Vickers, I would say if you're buying it at a physical retail shop, just take a look and compare your options. Fifefield and Vickers definitely get a little lower of a recommend. Fifefield isn't a whole lot new if you already have David, but if you don't have David, it's a cool figure. And I guess even if you do, it is cool just for being another weird infected creature from Prometheus. I think maybe giving him a hammer peed or something a little extra would have been a neat way to make this figure a little more appetizing or maybe giving him one of the ooze canisters that came with the holographic engineers since those got a pretty limited release and were very expensive when they first came out for some stupid reason. And then Vickers I really like. I mean it has a lot of the same stuff I like with Shaw going on because it's the same body and everything. The head sculpt's well done. The flamethrower looks really freaking cool but there's just QC issues that make me a little nervous with it. Needing to go through so many figures to find one that had eyes that I was okay with and the just fragile nature of that flamethrower just kind of makes me a little wary and it makes me want to put out the PSA there that you just need to be careful when selecting a Vickers and handling the accessory as well. Three recommends for this line. But what a weird history for the Prometheus line. We had like two normal waves, a two-pack exclusive Toys R Us set, and then a last gasping wave that came way after the rest that was way overpriced. And then here, years later, a third wave. I don't even know if you could call this wave three because it's so far removed from the rest. But moving forward, I guess we have Alien Covenant to look forward to. Uh, you can probably tell by the tone of my voice, I was not enthralled with that film. I'm honestly not entirely sure I'm going to pick up all of the figures from that line. Probably get the new Xenomorph, and I'll probably get the Creature Pack, but that Neomorph is a really hard sell for me. I'm just not a fan of that design. And moving forward, NECA's announced a lot of new stuff from Aliens. I know we have Lambert coming out pretty soon as well. I pre-ordered that figure like forever ago and I, I don't know when it's ever actually going to ship but then they were just announced they were doing Burke a new version of Ripley and a different version of Vasquez and that stuff makes me happy for damn sure and that accessory set looks badass too so I guess there is plenty to look forward to and at the time of recording San Diego Comic-Con is right around the corner so we'll get to see even more new cool stuff hopefully Make sure you check me out on Facebook, link below. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm more active there than pretty much anywhere else right now. Username Outside the Box Reviews. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this has been your Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.